Hi everyone, for my vlog today, I am going to be talking about these brushes from Refer. Now, I've actually had them for quite some time, I think, you know, as early as January of 2024. But the main reason why I'm only talking about this now is because at that time, there were a lot of foodie releases from legacy foodie brands, and these brushes just kind of got lost in the mix. Now, Refer eyeshadow brushes are one of those eyeshadow brushes that never really called out to me. I think what doesn't attract me to the brand is actually the color of the uh, handles here because it's all black everything is all black and when you look at my brush kit here it's actually black so the inner lining of that is black so when I put these on my brush kit they kind of like disappear into it and I kind of like you know forget that they're actually there I'm actually cued by color so if I see color I'm like you know really drawn to that and because they're all black they kind of like fade into the background if you know what I mean now unfortunately I don't really pick them up much and the main reason why is because I have found that these brush heads have quite like you know serious strength in them wherein it actually applies a certain amount of pressure in the eyes which I find uncomfortable and because of that it's actually you know changing my methods of applying eyeshadow so I'm very light-handed with my eyeshadow application of the eyes and because of the strength of the brush heads here um, I find that I'm adjusting my pressure more wherein I'm actually applying like you know lighter um, hand movements and that's kind of like changing my methodology which I actually didn't like this doesn't necessarily mean that they're like you know bad brushes but they're just like you know very different what made me decide to purchase these eyeshadow brushes at that time was that refer had a major sale going on on their website wherein you can get brushes for at least like you know 50 percent off which is actually a great bargain especially if you're someone who's starting your food journey or like you know if you're someone like you know who can't afford to buy brushes in uh, like you know, its full price because all you have to do if you purchase like you know refer eyeshadow brushes um, you can always like you know give them their feedback on what you like and don't like about their brushes so um, mind you by the way I am comfortable saying all of these things here on my channel because whatever I'm telling you guys is also the things that I told refer on my feedback when I actually got this because this set alone this is actually their like you know 10 out of 10 like you know the 10 best-selling brushes on their website and I got this at a very amazing price of I think a hundred dollars but you know unfortunately um, this set is currently not um, available for purchase on the refer website because I have found that they have two sets for sale now uh, the first set is actually the precision eye set wherein they have four brushes that is used to achieve incredible eye looks and those four brushes are actually part of this 10 out of 10. The other set they are also selling right now is the core eye set wherein they're actually selling four of their best-selling eyeshadow brushes and those four eyeshadow brushes are also part of this 10 out of 10. So I'm going to talk about these brushes one by one. I'm going to tell you guys which like you know brushes belong to which set okay. So um, I am hoping that this vlog is not going to be long so if it does pardon me but I'm going to try to be quite concise with my thoughts and also like you know some tidbits of application so that you guys can also see how I like to use these brushes okay all right so let us begin I have brush number one which is kind of like a worker type of a brush brush number two which is a builder type of a brush brush number three which is a small pencil brush love the brush at size of this this is brush number 13 which is like you know, a blending brush of sorts small size for a brush head love this as well another blending brush this is brush number 14 now this is another blending brush crease brush of sorts this is brush number 15 this gigantic brush is brush number 16 now this small pencil brush here is brush number 23 this large type of pencil brush is called the brush number 26 and this is brush number 27 a very nice fluffy airy blending brush now of these 10 brushes there are only two brushes which I actually Actually don't like and it's actually brush number 16 which is this brush and brush number 15 now the main reason why I'm not you know, fond of these two eyeshadow brushes is because I find that they are actually a little bit too big for my eye shape and I find that they're also quite strong at the core that sometimes when I use it to apply eyeshadow I actually feel pressure on my eyeball and it feels a little bit uncomfortable 
and also brush number uh, 15. This one has more, it exerts more pressure on the eyeball than a brush number 16. So, but if you are someone who doesn't have sensitive eyes, or if you're someone who, like, you know, can handle this type of pressure and you like to use a lot of, like, you know, hard pressed eyeshadows, things like that, then I think you won't have any problem with this. Um, this eyeshadow brushes actually are also great for people who have, like, you know, deep set eyes like mine because of the pointy nature of the brushes here so when you load the color on this part and then you're actually able to like you know anchor the brush head very nicely on your socket line and it actually just really helps you to like you know apply the color and to blend it out at the same time but um this doesn't necessarily mean that i don't like this but it's just like you know um again altering the way that i'm actually like you know applying pressure into the eyelid because as i've said before i'm very light-handed with my hands like you know so i find that i have to be even more light-handed when i am using this brushes so that i'm exerting comfortable pressure into my eyelid but my gosh i can actually feel on how strong the brush head of these two brushes are the rest of the eyeshadow brushes here are actually fine and they're actually found in the two um sets that are being sold by refer okay so the core eye set of refer has these four eyeshadow brushes you have eyeshadow brush number one eyeshadow brush number two eyeshadow brush number three and eyeshadow brush number 15. so you have one worker brush so it can be a great lay down brush and then you have one builder type of a brush to build color and intensity on the eyelid and then you have one small pencil brush which i actually appreciate because i'm so tired of the regular sized pencil brushes that are like you know um made in the market or like you know being sold in the market because i find them too big and sometimes i feel that they're redundant because like you know sometimes you don't really need those big types of like you know pencil brushes to blend out color because usually i find that you know a worker type of a brush or even a blending brush can actually help you to do that but with this one brush number three this is actually so amazing because the size of the brush out of this is actually perfect just to apply like you know color on the upper lash line or even to blend out like you know eyeliner and the final brush is brush number 15 this is perfect to actually like you know use to apply like you know colors on the crease and also for blending out color on the eyelid so it's actually quite fantastic now as i've said earlier i find that like you know these refer eyeshadow brushes are actually quite um strong i find that i actually use them either for like you know cream eyeshadow products or like you know um hard pressed um eyeshadow colors or even baked gelée because they actually pick up um the products um more than let's say the softer type of um, eyeshadow brushes so for example i'm going to use brush number zero one to apply this cream eyeshadow from um charlotte tilbury so this is her eyes to mesmerize in rose gold so i've loaded the product here on the brush head now because this is made of undyed goat hair it's actually easy to wash this at the end of the day now, I like this brush because, as you guys can see, it actually lays down these types of, like, you know, formulas quite nicely. And because it has a nice airy uh, tip in the bristle, I'm also actually able to blend it out at the same time. I like the shape of the brush head here because it's round and it's also flat. So it can actually fit quite nicely on the eyelid, whether you like to load eyeshadow colors this way, like this. Or even sideways like this because of the way that it like you know um, has a rounded tip here you can actually able to apply the color well into the inner corner of the eye and also to blend it out quite nicely it's actually quite effective it's so quite effortless and also very easy now by the way um, all of the brush heads that I am showing you right now so far are actually made of goat hair but it's actually unspecified what type of goat hair is actually used on the brushes of refer brushes and also one thing by the way um i don't know if the handles here are made of plastic or wood it's very hard for me to differentiate because they're actually very very light so the refer 01 brush has a brush set that actually reminds me of the sonia gt5 brush wherein if i place them side by side you guys can actually see that the brush set designs are actually very similar but there's just a difference in sizes wherein the refer 01 is smaller than the t5 from sonia g and if you put it to the side as you guys can see the brush designs are almost the same wherein they have a very airy tip look at that now in terms of softness 
I can say that the T5 actually feels softer than the Refer01 brush. Now I have been saying earlier that the Refer01 brush reminds me of like a um, worker type of a brush of sorts. And just for example, this is the Sonya G Worker S brush from her new Fundamental Eye series. And if you put them side by side, you guys can see that they're actually quite different, but they have like, you know, that same, uh, like, you know, flat paddle um, design, but there's just a difference in airiness in the tips and of course in the fullness of the belly. So the um, Worker S here has a very full bear belly and the tips are not airy at all. Okay. All right, so that's how I could compare the Refer brush to one of my most favorite worker brushes and the new Sonya GT5 Kiaki Kakishibo brush. Okay, all right, so this is how brush number 01 applies color on the eyes. Very beautiful, I like that. So this is brush number 15, and I'm going to apply this nice color here onto my socket line. So this is how much product this brush picks up. So let me just try to remove a little bit of it at the back of my hand just so that I'm not going to overload my socket line with this color. And again, I'm exerting very minimal pressure onto my socket line because I don't want to feel uncomfortable. I like the tip of this because it anchors very nicely here into my socket line area and also blends out the color quite nicely. Okay, so let me just continue to buff it out and to blend it out. Now, truthfully, brush number 15 is also a little bit too big for my liking because, like, you know, I don't have a big real estate on my eyelid. So I prefer to use, like, you know, smaller crease or blending brushes on my eyes. Okay, so I have brush number three now. So I'm going to use this to apply this color on my upper lash line. So this is actually a great, like, you know, pencil brush if you just want to apply a hint of color on your upper lash line. Or even if you want to add, like, you know, some intensity on your outer V portion. And you want to, like, you know, really try to add color into your crease and your socket line just to blend everything. Also, if you want to make it, like, you know, a very precise application of color. So anyway, so let me just try to apply color into my inner um, lash line, okay? Now, as with all eyeshadow brushes, the type of intensity like, you know, really depends on how much pressure you exert. So if you're very light-handed with your eyeshadow application, you're always going to get a very light application of color, also well diffused. But if you want to intensify, you just have to pick up more product and you really have to press it onto your eyelid. All right, fantastic. And I'm just going to remove some excess color at the back of my hand and try to blend it here into my socket line. Now, by the way, I'm using two um, palettes from Chanel. So I am using the Le Cat Homme in Tisse Combo and also the Tisse Rivoli um, eyeshadow palette, okay? And now I have brush number two. And this is what I'm going to use to add, like, you know, this pinky shade here onto my mobile eyelid. Just add, like, you know, a hint of color and, like, you know, drama now i like the size of this brush head because it actually fits quite nicely into my eyelid and the brush head design of this is quite similar to the builder brushes of sonia g like for example let me show you guys here okay so this is sonia g's builder m brush so as you guys can see the brush head designs are quite similar but there's just a difference in density okay so I believe the um, Sonia G um, Builder M will pick up more pigment and it's also going to deliver more intensity because of how um, like, you know, full the belly is of this brush head. But the Refer 03 here actually like, you know, picks up a nice, um, well-balanced amount of pigment. So if you're someone who's like, you know, very um, careful with your eyeshadow application, this is also good for you. But if you're someone who wants to build up like, you know, color and intensity, the Builder M is a good brush for that. So what other type of Builder brushes do I have here? Ah, okay, so here. This is from the Kiaki Kakishibo set of Sonya G. This is the T2. 
So again, they look very, very similar, but the T2 here is more rounded, while the refer 0, 2 here is more square. Square, so it's a little bit rounded here at the corners of the tips of the bristles. Now, in terms of length, I think the um, T2 here is just a little bit longer than the Builder M and the refer 0, 2 brush. Okay, that's that. Okay, so let me just continue to blend everything. Now the 03 brush here that I'm using, um, it kind of like looks very similar to um, the Sonia G Pencil S brush. Okay, look at that. But the Pencil S brush is just smaller and it's also shorter in comparison to the 03 brush. So the next eyeshadow brushes I'm going to be talking about are these four eyeshadow brushes and this is part of the precision eye set of refer. So I have brush number 13 here. I also have blending brush number 14 which is a little bit bigger and longer than brush number 13 as you guys can see here. And then I have brush number 23 which is a pencil brush. Now this brush is actually smaller than brush number 03 that I showed you guys earlier so this will actually offer precision application of eyeshadow or eyeliner into your um, eyelids so which is actually perfect for the set that it belongs to and then the final brush that they have here is brush number 28 it is a flat type of a brush paddle like so again it's like a builder brush wherein you can actually use to apply and to build color into the eyelid now as it is stated here on the website for a limited time it includes a complementary precision lander brush number 29 which i actually purchased separately when i purchased the 10 out of 10 of brushes from refer and this is actually an amazing like you know brush it's actually quite soft and the brush head here is actually flat which is actually perfect to use if you just really want to stamp the color as close to your last line as possible okay as you guys can see here the brush heads are actually smaller which is actually perfect and if i just want to add more intensity into the eyes this is uh, the type of brush that i would actually use so for example i'm going to be using brush number 14 and i'm going to pick up this deep shade here look at how much product this picks up and i'm just going to use this brush to apply the color into my socket line to add more intensity so as you guys can see it's already giving like you know more depth into my socket line area and what i like about this brush it also like you know helps me to um, create the shape that i need for my eye because after all like you know my eyes they kind of droop a little bit they're also deep set so i really need to apply the eyeshadow a little bit higher into my eyelid just so that when I open my eyes, I can you know, create this nice lifted look for my eyes. Okay, and I'm also able to actually blend out the edges with this brush. Now in terms of pressure, this brush still exerts a certain amount of pressure into my eye socket. But it's not as uncomfortable as the brush number 15. Where was that? This one is actually very, very strong that sometimes like, you know, it really makes um, like, you know, the application of eyeshadow color into my eyelids would be a little bit uncomfortable but with this one it's actually quite comfortable and i actually love it so now i have brush number 13 and i'm gonna pick up this color right now and look on how much color this actually picks up and i can actually use this brush to apply like you know intensity here in the outer v portions i'm sure you can see that already it's building up intensity and this can also really be a very useful brush when i'm adding like you know detailed work and precision work into my socket line area so if you have this brush you don't even need to use like you know a pencil brush if you want to add like, you know, intensity in your outer v portion but the great thing about this brush is that because it's a blending brush of, co of sorts um it's going to apply a more like you know softly um precise application of color into your socket line area or into your outer v area look at that look how very nice and soft and smoky this eye look is looking to be well blended too I love it okay so I'm just gonna be looking straight into the monitor now and I'm just going to try to blend out the outer edges so these are my most favorite like you know blending brushes and crease brushes with small brush head sizes that I love to use on the regular and I believe it's quite comparable to the refer number 13 and number 14 brush 
look at that. So let me just put the Hakuhodo J146 here, and this is the Sonya G Crease M. This is the Sonya G Mini Booster, and this is the Sonya G Lotus Soft Definer. So let me just put them close to the lens as possible. And I'm sure you guys can already see some similarities and some difference. Look at that. So I'm going to put the Lotus Soft Definer beside the Refer number 13 brush because I think they're quite comparable. Let me remove these. So they both have like, you know, small brush head designs. The refer number 13 here is just a tad longer than the Sonya G Lotus um, Soft Definer. And the Soft Definer has a tapered shape to a point, while the number 13 has like, you know, a flatter top here on the bristles. Amazing, right? Both feel very soft to the touch, but I can feel like, you know, they're both quite resilient. Amazing. Look at that. Nice snap back into position too. Fantastic. Now these four eyeshadow brushes, they look to be quite comparable. But upon closer inspection, I could say that the refer number 14 brush is more comparable to the Hakodo J146 brush because they almost have the same brush head design. Look at that. Even the way that they bloom and the airiness on the tips. Look at that. But the refer number 14 brush just blooms out more than the Hakuhodo J146. Now the Sonya G Crease M here, if I put them right beside the three other brushes, so you guys can see that they almost have the same length, like you know, same airiness, but there's a difference in the brush head design where in the tip of the Crease M here is a little bit flatter. And not, it's not as tapered as the Hakuhodo J146 and the Refer Number 14 brush. So um, I kind of like having these two in the mix because they just kind of like, you know, fit very nicely um, with the brush head size and also with my makeup sentiments. Because again, if I want to be precise with my color application, I prefer to use smaller, like, you know, blending brushes like this to apply color on the eyelid. Okay. All right. And of course, we have the Builder brush here. And you can actually use this not only to apply like, you know, color into like the, um, like, you know, the mobile um, area of your lid, but you can also use this brush to be um, quite precise with your like, you know, highlighter application on your brow bone area. And even here on the inner corner, especially if you want to build the color well into your mobile lid so that you're able to blend out the colors nicely. There, it's like opening up everything. And now I have brush number 23, the small pencil brush. I'm going to pick up this color here. And I can actually use this to intensify my upper lash line a little bit. Can you see that? It's actually intensifying quite nicely. And because of the small brush head here, I can get very well into like, you know, the um, space in between my lashes as close to my lash line as possible. Just to like you know really add intensity there and of course because this is actually quite small i can also use this if i want to apply color here into my lower lash line and because of the brush head here which is actually quite resilient i'm also able to actually help create a lift for this eye look and also to blend it into like you know the um, upper crease area of my eye very nice look at that now, what I love about the size of this brush head here is because I can really get into this part of my eye here because I actually have a crease there. And I find that if I'm wearing like, you know, very strong eye looks, I really need to apply a lot of the pigment in that area just so that it helps in creating the illusion of having this very full eye look. And just, you know, getting rid of the crease there. Look at that. So my eyes is now quite wide and open and lifted. I love it. So I've shown you guys earlier the difference between the number 3 and the number 23 brush in terms of size of the brush head. So the other pencil brush that I have from Refer in my collection at the moment is the number 26 brush. And you guys can see on how big the brush head is of this brush. Now, um, in terms of comparisons to other pencil brushes in my collection, which is quite similar to these two brushes. So let me remove number 26 out because it's so obvious the difference in size. So this is the Sonya G Pencil S. So let me put this there. And it actually is quite small. And it actually is smaller than the Refer number 3 brush. And it's actually quite comparable to the Refer number 23 brush here, wherein it has actually the almost same brush head shape. 
but it's just the size and the length that's actually different. Now, the refer number 23 brush here, if there was one brush I could compare it to, it's actually my Hakuhodo G5515 brush. And if I'm going to put it right beside that, you guys can see that these two brushes almost have like, you know, the same brush head size and shape, but there's just a difference in density and also the way it tapers at the point of the brush head. So again, I love having like, you know, different varieties of like, you know, pencil brushes in my collection because they're actually very, very helpful in blending out eyeliner or even eye color close to the lash line. All right, so next I have brush number 29, which is like, you know, free for a limited time if you purchase a precision eye set from Refer. So if there's one brush that I could like you know, compare the Refer number 29 brush to is actually to the Hakuhodo G5512 brush because look at the brush head size of these two brushes. Look how small. Of course, the Hakuhodo G5512 is actually like, you know, smaller, but like, you know, the brush head tips is actually very different, wherein the G5512 brush here has a much more rounder tip. Well, obviously, in the refer number 29, it's a flat type of a brush head. And you can actually use this to apply the like, you know, gel eyeliner, liquid eyeliner. But for this portion of our video, I'm going to use this brush to apply a nice black eyeshadow here. So this is a matte eyeshadow. And I'm just going to use this brush to really press in the black color as close to my lash line as possible so that you guys can see on how intense the black is. So if you're like, you know, using a uh, gel eyeliner, so you can apply the gel eyeliner first. And if you want to like, you know, make it stay longer on your eyelid, you can just like, you know, press whatever colored uh, eyeshadow that you would like to use to set that eyeliner and to add intensity on your lash line. And because the brush head of this is very, very small, and it's very, very straight, I actually find that it's very easy for me to apply color here into the inner corner of my eyelid. Look at that. I have a very nice, like, you know, intense upper lash line now, but it's still quite soft. And with whatever, like, you know, eyeshadow brush that you've been using to, like, you know, blend out colors, things like that. Like, for example, I have here brush number 03. I can just go back and pick up, like, you know, the color that I was using it with. And I can just, like, you know, lightly brush it along so that I have a nice blend of color and creating a very nice, like, you know, soft eye look. All right, so this is how these nine eyeshadow brushes from Refer actually apply color on my eyelids. So what I have here is a combination of two eye sets that are running on Refer right now. So you have the core eye set and the precision eye set. And if at the time that you're purchasing this, the um, limited offer of brush number 29 is no longer available, do get it because this is one of my most favorite um, brushes to use when I just want to apply color as close to the lash line as possible, especially if I want to intensify that area. So this is actually a must buy for you, okay? All right, so now that I have talked about those eyeshadow brushes, let's continue and talk about the other eyeshadow brushes that I got from Refer. But before I do so, let me just apply some mascara on this eye because I just think that that will just say complete the look quite nicely. All right, so these are the rest of the eyeshadow brushes that I also purchased from Refer at the same time. And I have here brush number 27 and brush number 16. I find them to be a little bit too big for my liking. And I can say that it's actually quite comparable to the G5552 brush from, like, you know, um, Hakuhodo. So um, this is also one of my most unused brush in my collection because I just find them a little bit too big. But in terms of softness, I can say that the G5552 522 brush is actually incredibly soft in comparison to these two eyeshadow brushes because again I can really feel like you know the pressure that the brush head actually exerts into my eyeball which I actually don't like okay now um, these two brushes are actually quite big and this is the Sonia G uh, Detail Pro brush. So they're almost the same in terms of like, you know, brush head length, but they just have a difference in like, you know, airiness in the brush head design because the Detail Pro here is actually very, very airy and it feels very comfortable to use on the eyelid. 
Well, the other two from refer brush number twenty, uh, brush number twenty-seven and brush number sixteen are more compact, and maybe that's why I can feel more pressure when I'm using these brushes on my eyelid. But anyway, so what I would like to use these brushes for is that, for example, brush number twenty-seven. If I want to, like you know, apply a one and done eyeshadow look, I can just like you know, dip the brush into the my color of choice. And just like you know, really buff the color well into the eyelid. And look at that, it applies the color instantly, also very softly. And I can also, like, you know, blend out the color effectively. So, if you're someone who's very carefree with your, like, you know, eyeshadow application, you won't go wrong with this brush, okay? just remove that and then brush number 16 here again is way too big so I think you can use this for a number of things like for example if you want to add highlighter on your brow bone area you can use this brush let me just pick up this color here and apply it here so again it's gonna be more diffuse and it's gonna apply in a much more wider area on the eyelid so and also me saying that you can also actually use this to actually apply highlighting colors on your like you know upper cheek so for example let me get this highlighting color from hourglass and you can actually apply it here but one word of caution though because this is an eyeshadow brush so if you are going to use this to apply highlighting colors into your like you know upper cheeks um it's going to impact a very precise amount of color and also it's going to be in a very like you know spot on portion in your cheek so you might have to like you know really blend out the highlighter so that you don't get this very like you know high impact color in one spot on your cheeks Okay, the next brush that I have here, it's brush number 32, and this is actually an angled brush. Now, I purchased this brush because out of, like, you know, nostalgia, because when I first started, like, you know, doing makeup, um, there was one brush that I actually liked to use, and it was from Laura Mercier, and it actually had a similar brush head design like this, but that brush was just actually a little bit bigger than this. Now, I actually like the size of this because, um, like, you know, um, what I like to use this for is actually when I want to apply like, you know, eyeshadow color in the crease of the eyes. So for example, let me pick up this very nice matte browny pink eyeshadow color first. And this is how much product it picks up. Now what I like to use this brush for is that I can just actually lay the brush here into my socket line and crease area. And I can just like, you know, really press the brush into that part. And this already applies, like, you know, color into my socket line and crease area in one go. Look at that. And because of the very nice angled nature of the brush head here, I can also use this to actually blend out the edges. And even when I hold the brush head here at an angle, I can also use this to apply color in this portion. And it will already help to create a lift for my eye. So if you're someone who like you know wants an eyeshadow brush to do this like you know all in one go and in one time as, as you guys can see it's actually quite nicely blended as well because like you know um even if the brush head design here is actually quite compact it imparts a very nice like you know um soft amount of color also quite blended but then again i'm also using like you know a very light shade of eyeshadow color so if you are going to use this brush, you can think of this brush as a nice brush to actually apply a nice amount of transition color into your socket line or into your crease. And if you want to intensify, you can always just go back and pick up a deeper shade like this. Just ensure that the tip here should actually like, you know, anchor itself close to the crease and that's what will actually apply the intensity as close to your crease line as possible. And then that will also like, you know, really help to anchor the brush well into your socket line. And then the rest of the bristles here, those are the tips that will actually like, you know, apply the color well into like, you know, your socket line just below your brow bone. And that will also really help to buff out and to blend out the color. Look at that. Very nice blending of color nice intensity as well 
and let's just buff out everything and again mind you the colors that I used to apply like you know this nice brown color into my socket line and crease line are actually matte eyeshadow colors okay now what I would use this brush for I remember before is I would actually use it to apply like you know some nose contouring but I just think that the brush head here is like you know quite strong that it might just like you know disturb like you know the foundation or the concealer that you actually put into your nose area okay all right, now I have here brush number 26, which is actually like your, your typical pencil eyeshadow brush. Now, again, you can use this in any way that you want to, but basically I like using this if I want to intensify like, you know, the outer V portion of the eye. And if I want to apply intensity on the crease, you can also use this brush here. But because the brush head is a little bit big in comparison to brush number 23 and brush number 3 as you guys can see here so it's not going to impart a uh, like you know more precise application of color so it's still diffuse but mind you as you guys can see i already have a nice defined eyeshadow application of color there so i'm just taking a really blending the color out and buffing it into that area and this will just really help to apply like you know nice intense colors there now, truthfully, the first time I used uh, like, you know, these eyeshadow brushes for matte, I was like, you know, very surprised with them because I was initially scared because, again, as I've been saying all throughout the video, like, you know, the brush heads of these refer eyeshadow brushes are actually very, very strong and very resilient. So I find that adjusting the way that I just, like, you know, press the brush into, like, you know, the pan of the eyeshadow and even, like, you know, removing any excess here on, like, you know, at the back of my hand just to remove any pigment. And, like, you know, that just really helps in ensuring that I apply a nice, well-blended amount of color. And also, it just really helps in me not getting a lot of fallout into my, like, you know, upper cheeks because, after all, I did not use any eyeshadow base here on my eyelid. And these brushes have been very helpful in actually applying the colors very nicely into my eyes, okay? All right, so what else do I have here? Ah, I have here brush number 21. So brush number 21 is a mix of goat hair and synthetic fibers. So the thing with this is I actually like to use this to actually, like, you know, pick up um, concealer and deliver it in a precise manner here like in the inner corner of the eye and then what I like about the brush head here because again it's very strong it's actually very effective in also blending out the color here in the inner corner and it just has a way of helping you to buff out and to blend out the color look at that very nice and very easy and also very fast and mind you I'm not using any foundation today by the way so again let me pick up more of this concealer here and apply that here so it's actually quite thin, it's also quite compact, and I actually like on how well, like, you know, the tips here can really be helpful in also helping you to be precise with your concealer application and also with your blending. But I wish, though, that the bristle here had more fiber in it because as you guys can see, as I'm just, like, you know, continuing to blend the concealer and trying to guide the concealer into an area where I want it to be, it kind of like deforms the shape already so I just need it to be a little bit more intense now if there was one brush that I would like to compare this to well it's not like you know a combination of you know synthetic and um, natural bristled fibers but I have here these like you know brushes from Hakuhodo so these are the S132 and the S139 so these are made of weasel and I actually love using this for concealer application I actually love to use this as well to apply like you know lipstick color into the lips glosses because I just find that they actually work very well so um you can actually see me use this brush for that purpose in my like you know Lisa Eldridge bomb embrace video I'm gonna put a link down in the description box so that you can go and check that out okay but not only does this brush is useful in actually applying like you know um, concealer into like you know your under eye area but you can also use this to apply like you know cream eyeshadow so I still have here my Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize and it actually picks up a ton of products so let me just take you know remove some product here at the back of my hand and this is what I'm gonna use to apply the color here to my mobile lid so I'm just creating a cut crease of sorts and this can also really help me to apply the color quite intensely here on the inner corner of the eye all right fantastic 
And the final brush that I have here is brush number 34. This is the eyeliner brush. So any eyeliner brush is actually good in my book. Like, you know, this is made of, like, you know, nylon fibers. So this just really helps me to apply eyeliner well into my upper lash line area. And again, depending on the intensity and the pressure that I exert on the brush head, I can get a thick eyeliner application or a thin eyeliner application. So now one thing that I have noticed with this brush head though is that it gets deformed quite fast, especially if I'm you know, using it as an eyeliner, as you guys can see here. So I just hope that they add more coarse strength into this because you really need strength in an eyeliner brush. But it still does the job though, but you just have to be quite fast when you're doing it and it's still quite resilient because I can actually see that it's actually disturbing some of the gel eyeliner that has dried on, like, you know, my upper lash line. Alright, so and if I just want to finish off this eyeliner look, I can get brush number 29, get this black eyeshadow here, and this will just take and really add some intensity and staying power. And let me just remove any excess um, you know, gel eyeliner that fell into my upper cheeks because this eyeliner brush really disturbed some of the gel eyeliner that I placed there. Alright, and let me apply some mascara just to complete the look. Fantastic. And before I truly let you go, one thing I have to say, by the way, I actually love the way Refer actually, like, you know, um, delivers their brushes. It's in a corrugated box like this, and it says here, like, you know, it's um, handcrafted in Japan. I actually love it. And if you open it, there's a very nice, like, you know, welcome in the box and of course each of the brush actually comes with their own Kumano Fuda seal so again that's an assurance that your brushes are made in Kumano Hiroshima in Japan all right so that's it for me today so if you guys have any more questions about how I use all of these brushes from Refer please let me know down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it okay and of course if you do happen to have Refer eyeshadow brushes and you're watching this video please let me know what are your favorite eyeshadow brushes or even face brushes from Refer and maybe that might pique at my interest as well okay all right so if you made it this far thank you so much for hanging around with me so i'm gonna let you guys go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye